Right, welcome to this complete army video for the Blood Angels. I do have a brand new list for them. It's been an army that's struggled since 8th edition has come out, uh, but I've, I still think the Blood Angels can be a powerful army, and so I've uh, revamped the list here. This is a list that I proposed on the Plus channel, and then some subscriber feedback came in, and then I've put together the final list. I paint up a few new models. Uh, significantly, the Smash Captain, he'll be in this list here, and so now this army's completed, you can keep a look out for it. Uh, in the various battle reports to be featured on both of the channels. But um, I think this is a big improvement. But this video is to show you the new force, to see what you think of it, leave your own comments and feedback, big changes, small changes, make your predictions as to how well you think the list will do. Uh, and then we'll see how well the Blood Angels do. They've got a lot of pride to restore, a lot of times they've been beaten and humbled and humiliated. And so looking forward to sending them back into action with a stronger list, and hopefully uh, they will be able to honour the chapter. So if you go back to uh, the previous Blood Angels list, the complete army video, you'll see the list on there, you can sort of compare the two. Uh, it featured a lot of uh, tanks in that one, uh, Double Bow Predator, Double Predator Annihilator, and what I was trying to do was trying to match uh, the opponent's gun lines, and often that didn't work out, the, the tanks were picked on and destroyed, uh, and then what my assault the assault part of the army I had left, there wasn't enough to take the opponent on effectively. And thinking about it, it didn't really reflect the style of the Blood Angels. Blood Angels was meant to be one of the aggressive, up close and assault based chapters for the Space Marines. So this new list I think is a better reflection uh, of the aggressiveness. The Blood Angels want a list that's scary. You know, uh, Predator Annihilators and Bow Predators are sort of a bit predictable. You know it's a tank, it's just going to drive around uh, and it's not too much of a, a shock to those kind of units. But I wanted to bring in some nasty units, more aggressive, and then the difficulty of going second in 8th edition, trying to combat that with some tactics that I've got, uh, which I'll discuss in this video, sort of big tactical uh, discussion as well in this video, just to try and give you all the tactics and the reason why I've taken all the units. I'm gradually going to introduce all the units here, build up the list, talk about the tactics as I go along, and then later on we'll stand back and take a look at the completed list. So I have dropped all the tanks, they're gone. Double Bow Predator, two Predator Annihilators have been removed, that's freed up loads of points, loads and loads of points, and then with those points I brought in uh, some units I had previously, and then I have been painting up some new stuff as well. I am excited about this list here, and I reckon it should do better. I think it's the best Blood Angels list that I've done in 8th edition so far, but you be the judge, see what you think. Yeah, as we take a look at this Blood Angels Army, it's 2,000 points, Battle Forged. So uh, I've gone for Battalion, uh, as usual, so that gives me 8 command points in total. And then I have managed to get a Supreme Command Detachment in this list as well, so 9 command points, uh, which is a healthy amount for an elite army. Uh, you're not really able to do hordes and so on to go for brigades uh, and that kind of structure. So 9 command points I think is a healthy amount. So I'm happy enough with that. I'll just take them in the order of the codex here, gradually introduce each of these units. So, I have kept the Sanguinor. I still rate him, so he's in the list here. Uh, I may well try and do a conversion on him. I think it's going to be very cool. And that is to take... Uh, here's the Smash Captain, which we'll cover a bit later on. I have bought a second set of wings here from eBay. Uh, these are the Prosecutor Wings from Age of Sigmar, the Stormcast Eternals. I think that looks great. I want to do a conversion on him to make them match. So to lift him up off of his base to give him a bit of height, and then to take these wings off, uh, which I could use them for something else, uh, and then replace them with these wings here. So have these two on a similar kind of level and the same kind of wings as well. Two very sort of eye-catching units, very unique. I think, so I think that'd be a good idea. But anyway, Sanguinor, uh, just here. So before I get started on this video here, if you like the way these Blood Angels look, if you're, uh, you like the way they've come out, then there is a full painting tutorial on the channel here, how to paint Blood Angels. And then on the Plus channel, there is uh, an in-depth painting tutorial of Blood Angels where I show you how to, take, uh, to paint one of the bigger models. It's one of the Bow Predators, one of the bigger projects. I'll show you from start to finish, every step of the way, how to paint uh, those up. So, Sanguinor, I've just cleared my gaming table away here because we've just finished a, a game. <laughs> it was a good one. Uh, so I just pushed that, all the stuff out the side. It makes quite a nice backdrop, I think, for these videos. But the Sanguinor here, 
Uh, movement 12, so you've got that element of speed, nice and quick. Uh, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 plus, he's excellent close combat, there's 5 wounds, 5 attacks, which is a really healthy amount. Uh, the Incarmine Broadsword is brilliant, plus 2 on his strengths, this guy fights at strength 6, it's AP minus 4, and it's D3 damage, so he'll charge quite happily into pretty much anything, even vehicles. Strength 6, he may be on 5 to wound, but then on the charge, gets plus 1 to his wound rolls, so even 4 plus to wound your average vehicle as well. So Sanguinor is, uh, I think, effective enough. Then he's got the Death Mask, not very significant, just minus one to the leadership, within three inches. He has Jump Pack Assault, so he's able to deep strike down and call him in somewhere on the table. That's very helpful. And then Aura of Fervor, add one to the attacks characteristic of friendly Blood Angels, infantry units within six of the Sanguinor. So the other units that I take, uh, Terminators, Sanguinary Guard and others, even the Smash Captain, they hang around this guy, all of a sudden they're all getting plus one attack. It really helps out an army that doesn't have many models. I'm trying to get enhance as much as I can the units that I have. So that Aura of Fervor is fantastic. Extra attack's brilliant. Uh, and then Avenging Angel, the Sanguinor can charge even if he fell back in the preceding movement phase. So I can pull him out of trouble and he's still free to charge something else. Plus he's got the four plus invulnerable saves. I think all round, he's an excellent uh, unit. He's 170 points, is nicely below uh, 200 points. So, he's in. Uh, partly because he's decent enough, and also the enhancements that he grants to other units nearby. So that's my first HQ. This is the battalion uh, we'll do first of all. It doesn't really matter where my HQ is, where they, which detachment they fit in, but the first one I'm gonna cover is the Sanguinor. So, that's him. Then, I guess in order here, Sanguinary Priest is the next one. He's helpful enough. Beautiful model. One of my favourite models, the Blood Angels. Brilliant release that Games Workshop did. It's the plastic one that they made. Really, really like this guy. It looks great. So, uh, the sculpting on him is fantastic. He is uh, 69 points. It's not very expensive at all. And... Uh, I don't really take him for his stats, don't expect him to do very much, uh, but it's mainly for the Narfakium. Because I've got a lot of characters in my Blood Angels army, I do want the ability to try and heal them if I can. Uh, a lot of my characters are quite quick around the table so they can get to this guy and uh, restore wounds and then get back in the fight. It's happened a number of times in games. Also the units he hangs around with, you can try and resurrect uh, lost models from that unit as well with the Narfakium. So it's within three inches. Uh, it's it's at the end of your movement phase. That's crucial. It lets you make your manoeuvres first. It lets him move, and it lets the other models move nearby as well, and then you're able to make your rolls. It's not at the start of the turn, so that really is nice and flexible. You're able to get in position before you use that vacuum. Uh, so you can restore D3 lost wounds to an infantry unit or a biker unit, and then uh, if there's if a chosen unit contains no wounded models, you can try and heal someone on 4+, plus or resurrect them, and then it restores them back to play with wind remaining. That's invaluable, especially for an elite based army. Like I've got five Terminators in the list. The ability to try and resurrect fallen Terminators is really helpful. And if this guy stays alive for the whole game, he's quite useful. So, plus he grants an extra, uh, increases strength characteristic by one. Not too significant, but there's that available from him as well. So, and then also, just sort of covering the tactics as I go along. If the game, at the later stages of the game, needs someone to go and hold an objective, we can just send this guy off. He's not too significant. And he can sit at the back and hold objectives. He's a character. One of the big tactics for this Blood Angels army is to negate the firepower that comes in against this Blood Angels army by using characters and hiding them uh, behind other units. So, uh, with the rules for 8th edition for characters, the opponent has to try and destroy the, the units that are in front of him. Uh, non-character units, remove those before they can even shoot at the character. So a number of my characters, uh, I'd like to try and shield them by using other units. Uh, but uh, we'll cover that as we go along. That's Sanguinary Priest. Okay, a brand new unit here. It's the Librarian Dreadnought. This is the one I've painted up new. I've been meaning to get one for a long time, and then some subscribers uh, pointed out saying how good the Librarian Dreadnought was. I do read the comments and what people, the feedback that people leave behind, and they said the Dreadnought's pretty good, or very good. So I've uh, painted him up. 
just here. So really glad to see him in the army. Now this is a special, <laughs> a special kind of dreadnought. This one, uh, he's quite powerful. So librarian dreadnought. This is HQ choice here. So uh, we'll cover the supreme command detachment first of all. He's eight wounds. This is the significant part here. He's eight wounds, and he's a character. So even this guy can hide behind other units, and he's not allowed to be shot at. Very significant. Uh, weapon skill 2 plus, so primarily using for close combat, and he's good in close combat. 2 plus to hit. Uh, strength 6, toughness 7, 8 wounds, there's plenty of wounds. If he's nicely shielded from firepower, there's 8 wounds there. Uh, 3 attacks, which is okay, but we can enhance that. And then a legit 9 of 3 up save. I give him. Uh, he's got psychic, it brings a bit of psychic, but it brings a bit of psychic ability into the army. I'm able to deny. Uh, a power and able to tap into the Blood Angels uh, discipline there. So, uh, Psychic Hood explodes, smoke launches. Now, I can attempt to manifest two Psychic Powers. We'll cover those in just a moment. Two ones that you just have to take for this guy. And then, yeah, the weaponry. So, the Furioso Force Halberd and the Furioso Fist with a Storm Bolter. The total for him is 187 points I pay for him because I take uh, a melter gun just to give me a bit of anti-tank punch if you find him charging into a tank potentially to strip off d6 wounds before he gets started so I use uh, the the fist is okay it's times two strengths strength 12 a minus three and three damage but usually been using the Furious of Force Halberd, plus four strength, so strength ten, so still threes to wound, or twos to wound on the charge against all the vehicles that are out there. Uh, and then it's AP minus four, so it's better in that way, it just strips the armor away. And then a straight three damage. Now that's okay, you know, with three attacks, but to enhance that. Uh, he can be enhanced with a stratagem. Yeah, it's Red Rampage. Use the stratagem in any fight phase. Add D3 to your tax characteristic of a Blood Angel's character for your army that charged earlier in the turn for the duration of the fight phase. So, just a character. Does it say infantry or biker? It's just a character. He has the character keywords. So for one command point, you can gain yourself uh, D3 extra attacks. All of a sudden, his three attacks becomes four to six attacks. And that is significant. That's enough to punch through a vehicle. And cause a lot of trouble, plus the melter gun shot as well. So all of a sudden, uh, you can enhance him, make him particularly nasty in close combat. So uh, at this stage, I will mention uh, relics, and I give a relic to uh, the sanguinary priest, Veritas Vitae. If your army's battle forge and the bearer is on the battlefield, roll a d6 each time you use a stratagem on a 5 plus you gain a command point. It just helps retain or gain back some command points. I find that very helpful. So Veritas Vitae is uh, one of the relics that I take. And I give it to the Sanguinary Priest. He's unlikely to get himself, or he's more unlikely to get himself in trouble and to be in the front of the battle line and so on. Other characters, higher chance of them being destroyed because they're in a more dangerous position. position. But this guy, I usually try and hide him in amongst like my terminators and there's a high chance of him surviving so I usually give the Veritas Vita to him. So the psychic powers for the Dragnaut. So first of all uh, Wings of Sanguinius, let's take two. So he's got Smite as standard. Then Wings of Sanguinius, this solves the age old problem of Dragnaut's, they're too slow. I could carry him in, a, in the back of, of a Storm Raven gunship, that's one way of moving around the table nice and quick. Uh, but the other one is Swings with Sanguinius. So he has his move of 6, plus he can advance. Uh, it's a walk charge value of 5, it's very likely you'll get this, make this power go off. If manifested, the Psyche can immediately move as if it were the movement phase. But his move characteristic is also increased to 12. So you're allowed to go 6 and then 12. It's 18 inch total. He gains fly. All of a sudden you're able to charge into flyers with this Dreadnought to the start of your next Psychic phase. And it means he can f shoot even if he fell back. In addition, whilst this power is in effect, you can reroll failed charge rolls 
for your Psyker. Three roll charges as well. It's an incredibly powerful psychic power. As I put this army together, uh, some people are saying, well, Blood Angels are weak, they're not so strong, but I, I, my opinion's changed. I think Blood Angels are one of the more powerful armies out there now. Uh, they, there's some incredibly strong units in the Blood Angels Codex. Maybe you disagree, but uh, I, I've been mightily impressed here. And this is, this is one of the units that really has impressed me. Um, so Wings of Sanguinius, uh, Quickening is the other one. So Warp Charge value of 7, it's an average chance of making it go off. If manifested, you can add 3 to Advance and Charge Rolls made for your Psyker. So you combine those two together, you're on 2d6 rerolling charges plus 3 inches. It's incredible. And you make D3 additional attacks with them in the Psychic phase, in the Fight phase, until the start of your next Psychic phase. So, uh, the other stratagem, that's if you charge, this one you just get the D3 additional attacks. So, all of a sudden, this guy can just have a, a fistful of attacks, and very, very powerful attacks as well. So he's frighteningly powerful. And he's a character, I can hide him behind. This is one of the major tactics of this army, is to hide these characters behind other units. And so the opponent can't get to my significant models, not as easily uh, as if, than if they were, if, than if they weren't characters. If they weren't characters, the opponent could just shoot at him, shoot at him, but now, because they're characters, they can be hidden behind screens. It's one of the big tactics that I have. So that's the Librarian Dreadnought. Great to have uh, the model as well. Enjoyed painting him up. Uh, really happy with how he came out. So, still got two more HQs to go. So the first, or, or the, the fourth HQ is a chaplain. It's just a regular chaplain. Yep. One of the old lead ones. And he's been in my Blood Angels army for years now. Real nice model. Uh, so, again, not taking him for his stat line. He's okay, but not expecting him to do very much in close combat. Uh, but still happily get stuck in against hordes and so on and support the, uh, my Terminator close combat unit. But I take him for his litanies of hate. He reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase for, for any Blood Angels units within six inches of this model. It's not just on the charge, it's just constantly rerolling your hit rolls in the fight phase. So, you know, you've charged in, you're rerolling your hits, next turn comes around, you're still rerolling your hits, this guy. It's extremely powerful depending on who he's near. Uh, they can use his leadership, which is nine. He's got a four plus in one save, and there is ability to give him a jump pack. I don't feel I need to, uh, but that is an option. So, I, I just think that ability to reroll hits is fantastic. The Blood Angels converge on uh, an opponent's position, multiple units, and they charge in. And there's all these six inch bubbles going on. You know, plus one attack, re-rolling hits, plus one strength, and all of this going on together, it just becomes exceptionally nasty if you're able to deliver uh, multiple units all at the same time. But just a regular chaplain, uh, 72 points for him, not very expensive, and another character uh, that can be hidden behind the screens of other units that I have. So the last one is the Slam Gwinius, the Smash Captain. Uh, I've already done, if you like the look of this guy, I've already done uh, a video about him before he was painted. I'll show you sort of how I put him together. Uh, you know, he's got the green stuff showing you how I put him, I uh, kit bashed him from a number of kits. Uh, and then after that, I've done a tactical a tactical video for him as well, uh, showing you the, the ways that you can use it. It's all the detailed tactics that you can use for this guy. It's one of the significant unit choices available to uh, Blood Angels. Hopefully for a long time to come. <laughs> Hopefully Games Workshop uh, don't change the codex and get rid of this guy, but because uh, a lot of work went into him. But there he is. Uh, so regular captain stats, but it's all these stack of Blood Angels enhancements that you can grant to make him better. Uh, 2 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, he's got 5 wounds which is okay, uh, 4 attacks, decent base, and then that can be enhanced, the first enhancement obviously is the Sanguinor being nearby, that puts him on 5 attacks, Sanguinor by the way benefits from his own plus 1 to attack, so he's on 6 attacks base as well, uh, but 4 attacks, then for weapons, uh, I take the Thunder Hammer and the Storm Shield, so 3 plus save and a 3 plus invun save now for him, I then give him wings, 
or a jump pack, it's wings, jump pack is the, the rules which I've, I've still kept the sanguinary guard jump pack there on the back. The wings are just for show perhaps or for manoeuvring as he flies around. Uh, so jump pack for him, that gives him jump pack assault, he can descend down with the sanguinor and the sanguinary guard that I have in the army. Reroll hit rolls of one. Uh, for friendly blood injuries units within six, that's for shooting and for close combat, and it's at any point, uh, not just on the charge, but at any point. So if I'm hitting on freeze, re-rolling ones, or two plus here, re-rolling ones just makes their attacks even more reliable. So that's really good. Four plus in one save, I give him a three plus with the shield, and that's what he has. Now the improvements that come for him is there's multiple options, I may well experiment. The one that I give him is a second relic, so I have to pay a command point, so that drops you down to eight. But it's jump pack model only. That's this guy. You can reroll foul charge rolls from model equipped to the angel's wing. That's so, so helpful. Just have to get this guy into combat. And your opponent cannot fire overwatch. That is exceptionally good. So you can charge a super heavy vehicle, for example, all those guns ready to fire at you. No overwatch allowed. It's very, very significant. The other one is you can go for Hammer of Bale, which means there's no minus to hit rolls, which is good, but I, I think Angel's Wing is superior. So, uh, so Angel's Wing. Then I make him the Warlord. And uh, James has been using the Blind Angels. We've been trying this one, Artisan of War, plus one to your damage characteristic of the weapon that's carried by your Warlord. So, uh, you can't do it if you take the Hammer of Bale, but uh, the regular Thunder Hammer. So he'll be on three sits, twos to hit, and then becomes three sit because of the minus one, and then re-rolling ones. So it's, I think it's still reliable enough. Uh, then plus one to damage. If the damage gets three, it's damage four. So, you know, three successful wounds with no saves, and he'll destroy your average vehicle. That'll be 12 wounds. So it just, it just ups the damage. So I like Artisan of War. Uh, you can go for Gift of Foresight, is another popular one as well. Roll D6 each time your Warlord loses a wound. We're rolling rolls of one. On a six, the wound is ignored. If your Warlord has Black Rage, it's five or sixes to ignore wounds, just to give him a bit more durability. I try and help him stay alive or recover wounds with the Sanguinary Priest. So it's that. Then you can enhance him with Stratagems. So Red Rampage we looked at earlier on. Uh, D3 extra attacks for a character when you charge, so bumping his four attacks up to potentially seven. Uh, Descent of Angels is a great one. Uh, it's two command points, it's 3d6 for your charges. And remember, I take the Warlord trait, you can reroll charges of 3d6. You know, very, very likely he's gonna get the charge in. That's the important thing for him. You know, if I want him to land and get immediately into close combat. Uh, there's Honor the Chapter and Only in Death does Duty End. If he's slain, he can fight anyway or if he fights, he can then fight again. Massive impact stratagems available there for that high impact unit. Then, I mean, you may see other ones that I've missed out here, but uh, there is, uh, yeah, here it is, Death Visions of Sanguinius. One command point, use a stratagem when mustering your army, select a blood angels captain, chaplain, or lieutenant from your army, uh, which is this guy. He gains the Death Company keyword. That's plus one attack on the charge, another attack coming in, and he gets Black Rage, which is sixes to ignore wounds. So I, I think it's worth doing that, just to keep bumping him up as much as you can, as many as, as many enhancements as possible, to make him uh, as deadly as you can. Like, he's, a, he's a bargain. The, the final points cost for him is 129 points. So, very cheap, and he's got the potential to, to make havoc with super heavies. The amount of damage that he can uh, kick out, you know, if the situation's right, he can cause horrendous trouble. So, you know, potentially like, with him nearby, you know, like sort of eight attacks, like they all get through and then then fight again, you're gonna smash a super heavy in with this guy. I'd love to see the day <laughs> they're able to do it. So, there's still heresy in James's Astro Militaro army, so I, I could still use the Blood Angels against them. <laughs> but I really would like to get some revenge uh, against them. But uh, that's the captain. So that's my five HQs. 
All HQs, as I keep uh, mentioning, they can hide behind the screen of other units and vehicles and they're protected. And that's sort of the, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Some very significant units in this list already. So the points I freed up, it's about 700 of points freed up. Uh, that helped me get these two HQs here, the Smash Captain and the Dreadnought here. That paid for them dropping those tanks has gained me uh, some nasty units. And see the shift now, not these tanks are going to try and hide behind cover and an exchange of fire the opponent, none of that nonsense, it's more just, <laughs> just charge in as quick as possible uh, and try and coordinate like a deadly strike is the aim uh, now for this new revamped list. So, I've gone to troops. Battalion is really helpful for getting lots of command points and command points, there's so many, there's so many great stratagems for blowing angels, it's well worth trying to make use of as many of those as possible. But I, with the amount of elite, elite units, models and characters, I need a cheap option uh, for my battalion. And so thankfully we've gone for scouts. They've helped fulfill that role. You have to take three squads, so it's three minimal squads of scouts. And I've painted them up in the gray uh, cloaks or uh, overalls here, which I think looks a lot better than the cream. I think the gray looks good. So, I'll just assemble these here. I've gone for one unit of five uh, with a heavy bolter. The rest have bolters, so that's, a unit, that's uh, 65 points. I've then gone for uh, a unit with just bolters. No other upgrades. And then I've also gone for a unit with uh, close combat weapons and bolt pistols. I'm not expecting these guys to have major impact on the game. Uh, they're more a tactical choice. So, see your scouts here. Uh, you can go for concealed positions. When you set up this unit during deployment, you can set it up anywhere on the battlefield that's one nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone and enemy models. So, no man's land. These guys can deploy no man's land. And this is the kind of tactic here. I'll show you. It's sneaky, but it's just the way the rules are. I'll grab a piece of terrain here. So, say the opponent's over here. And here's a piece of line of sight blocking terrain. And here's my characters. In a deployment phase, I can deploy something like this. So the scouts can deploy behind cover. They can't be seen. And the opponent's here is not allowed to fire at the characters because there is a closer... Uh, enemy unit nearby. So the way the rules work, and it means that my characters can operate even if in line of sight of the opponent uh, because I have uh, a unit, a non-character unit concealed that's closer uh, to the enemy. So the scouts can perform a very important function that way, uh, helping to provide a screen. So the idea for these is not to send them in on suicide missions. Uh, I'm not expecting to contribute to the main attack, but to just provide screens. Uh, especially helpful for securing objectives, so to sit back on objectives, wherever objectives are dotted around, these guys can move out. Uh, sort of mopping up action, and there's a, some hordes nearby, a weak unit, and so on, these guys can be used just to sort of mop up. I do have a heavy bolter here, which if I have spare command points, and the game's going well, I can use a very powerful, or decent stratagem, it's Hellfire Shells, Use a stratagem just before a Blood infantry model from your army attacks with a heavy bolter. Uh, you may make a single hit roll and it inflicts D3 mortal wounds. So against any target, that could be a vehicle or a character or, or uh, you know something significant. So nasty enough that one. Uh, so I try and keep these alive by keeping them away from a lot of the trouble, using cover, hiding behind it or sitting inside a crater and so on. And then their aim is just to provide a screen uh, to protect the characters. So it's a tactical choice taking these. And it helps bulk the army out as well. And I've got three units of infantry uh, to use. That's all the troops I'm doing. So that helps me fulfill, and, and also the structure of the army helps me fulfill the battalion that unlocks that five command points, which is really helpful. So next on to elite. So I have two significant elite units for this army. The first is Sanguinary Guard. I was running a unit of five. But the way the points have worked out for this list, 
I'm able to run a unit of seven. So uh, they've expanded in size, which is helpful. They're a supporting unit for my HQs, specifically these two. So the Sanguinor and the Captain. And yeah, these guys all come down together or maybe keeping the characters on the board, moving them up behind the screens and then just bringing them down at the right point and all united together and charging in uh, is deadly enough. Sanguinary Guard, I think a, a decent here. Uh, strength or movement 12, so they're the same. They're united in their speed here. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, three plus strength, four toughness, four. Two wounds and it's two up armor save. So they're tough enough. They'll withstand a lot of, you know, bolts of fire, lads, gunfire and so on. Be a lot, take a lot to bring them down. I give them the Incarmine Sword and Angelus Bolt Gun. It makes them 35 points each. The Incarmine Sword is basically a power sword, but D3 damage. That's the significant part of that. And I like them because there's no minus to the hit roll. So these guys are on 3 plus to hit and no minuses. Yes, strength four against vehicles, often fives to wound, but on the charge, you can be on fours to wound, so still they can make a significant impact against vehicles. They get heirs of a skeleton. You can reroll failed hit rolls for models in this unit that are in six inches of a friendly Blood Angels Warlord. So whilst they're in six inches of him, they roll the hits, that's for shooting, and also for close combat as well. So freeze to hit rerolls. Uh, then with him nearby, plus one attack. So they become three attacks. Massive enhancement for that unit. So instead of 14 attacks, you're on 21 attacks with these re-rolling hits, you know, plus one of the wound rolls, and the damage it does come for it's minus three D3 damage. They'll, they'll mash through a lot of stuff. And jump pack assault, so able to deep strike down. For them, the significant stratagems is the descent of angels. Uh, it's when you descend down, 3D6 charge move, that really would help them get into close combat, and ideally, you can use that strategy once. So play it on these guys who've just landed, turn two onwards near the opponent, uh, and then have these have moved up the table into the right position, ready to all converge together. Is the plan, but um, they're okay. I think they're all right. They, they're, they're a bit vulnerable to heavy caliber weapons, but uh, they've done all right. They haven't done too bad. So, and and I, I love just the golden colour scheme going on. Love the red and the gold sort of theme going on here with this Blood Angels list. Plenty of red and then some nice golden characters here. Uh, so really like adding these in. And just, they're one of my favourite sculpts as well for the Blood Angels. One of the unique units that the Blood Angels have. A later date I, I may add in, I've got some axes here, I just count them all as swords. I may drop a couple of axes, the models I mean, and paint up for the same points cost a couple of these power fists. They're 12 points still as well. Uh, it just means a bit, of, a bit more uh, punch for tougher uh, targets like vehicles. So strength eight there with the power fists. Uh, it is minus one to hit, but it just lets me try and get some wounds in against the tougher targets. So but anyway, that's the Sanguinary Guard. I'll just shift these over. And because now in the old list, a lot of my assault was hanging upon these to make a, a big impact. I only had five. And this was sort of, you know, he was out of it, he was out of it, and this was my assault plus the Terminators, and I just didn't, didn't, it wasn't enough. But now, with a bigger unit, and him, and him, and the Terminators, there's less pressure on them to try and do everything. They're able to uh, contribute, to support, and to take on units and so on, but I'm not hanging everything on these guys. There's plenty of other units that I have able to do well in close combat as well. So, uh, they seem to fit better into this list. They're better supported, for sure. So, the other elite is the Terminator Assault Squad. So the ones I have is the, the regular Space Marine uh, Assault Terminators with the Forge World shoulder pads here. So they've got the Blood Angels markings on them, like so. Angels Workshop have since released a uh, specific Assault Squad uh, box set, which looks really nice. So, but anyway, I still run these guys. These have been in my list since the beginning of Blood Angels on this channel. 
Some will say, no, you shouldn't take them anymore, they're not as good. I'll just remember actually to add in the uh, teleport home up. But I still rate them. I think they would struggle by themselves, but these are to be supported by the chaplain, uh, who will give them uh, their reroll hits, which is very, very significant. And uh, 240 points, by the way, for those. Uh, it was 170, five of them, and 240 uh, for all of them. Uh, but the chaplain here, rerolling hits, and that's at any point. So, you know, uh, forced to hit because of the minus one for the fund hammers, but forced to hit rerolling hits makes them much, much more reliable. So I usually get a good amount of hits from these in close combat. Uh, they're two wounds, they're two attacks, they're three plus in one save, they're two up save, they're a very durable unit. Yeah, you know, last cannon shot comes in, it's two thirds of a chance they're just gonna bounce it off on the shield. If I start losing a couple of models, or wounds start coming in, the Sanguinary Priest is designed to hang around with these guys as well. He's granting their plus one strength. And uh, the Narfekium healing damage models, or models that have been slain, he can start restoring them. And the amount of times that's been useful, keeping this squad at a healthy amount. And there's times in the game where you zoom in, you deliver your initial attacks, and then there's sort of a, a break in the fighting. You sort of regroup, and during that time, uh, he's busy helping these out, restoring wounds and resurrecting models and so on. And they're just designed to hang around with each other. These are here to protect these guys. So, you know, a unit like this in the front line can take a lot of damage. And again, behind them is all of the characters. And the opponent has to try and get through this shield to try and then get through to the characters. This, this whole tactic here, uh, helping out. So, uh, the total for them, they've got Teleport Strike, and I usually deliver them in a Storm Raven Gunship, is the plan with those, uh, but I can go for Teleport Strike, and Teleport Homer, so you set that up in your deployment zone, and then, as long as it's not destroyed by the opponent, if they move within 9 it disappears, but it's somewhere where you can set up to fall back to later in the game, you send these guys out, they do the fighting, you stick this on one of your home objectives perhaps, and this unit you're able to teleport it out in the middle of the game, pull them back onto the teleport home. So it's a useful little asset to have. About 235 points for them, but uh, nicely enhanced, I think, with the, with the characters. So, it is an elite army, <laughs> So, but the, uh, the plan is to try and limit the damage that can potentially come through to them just with this. Use, hiding these guys, keeping these guys in the sky, here and here as well. The Dreadnought's quite easy to hide behind line of sight blocking terrain and swinging him around at the right time there, doing a quick move up the table. You can almost turn one engagement potentially with him if he needs to. Uh, and then the Storm Ravens as well, moving up quick to deliver the units. So there's nothing else here. I'm just going to go straight through to Flyers. Yep. The Storm Raven gunship. So I have two of them. This is the big shift in this list. The firepower, I haven't really lost the firepower. I had firepower in the form of the tanks, Predator and Annihilators with their four last cannon shots each. Uh, two of them, so that's eight last cannons. And then I had Hunter Killer Missiles on them. Bow Predators, I had Hunter Killer Missiles. I already struggle with the Bow Predators because every time they move, it's minus one to hit. And you're just firing at hordes and you're killing cheap stuff, a few models here and there, and it just wasn't very good. Sadly, because the the models are nice. But uh, Storm Raven Gunship, this is where my firepower is going to come from. I have been working on these models. Both of them are now entirely finished. A couple of things I did. Perhaps one change that only a handful of people have noticed. Originally, I had glued and painted these on the wrong way around. <laughs> so I'd, James pointed it out to us. Some subscriber, it was a while ago, pointed out saying, by the way, your tail fins are back to front. So I broke these off, uh, repainted them because of the, uh, the the marks on here. I had to repaint them going the other direction. Spun it around and glued them back on. So I've done that repair on both of those. And also a lot of subscribers saying take the hurricane bolters. So that's what I've done. I've modeled them on uh, to the flyers here. The rest of the loadout stayed the same, but uh, hurricane bolters have been given to each. And it just makes these look even more mean. So really glad to have added that in. So, and they just go onto their bases. You'll see these up close or, or laid out properly when we zoom out and take a look at the whole army. But two Storm Raven gunships 
in this list. The Army's still elite, it's still very compact, but double Storm Raven. So we'll cover some tactics for these as well, uh, some ways of trying to keep these alive and use them effectively. So I can't stop the opponent from firing at me entirely, they are going to fire. Two ways to try and protect them, protect your models. Try and make them harder to hit. Of all the units I have, you know, these are in the sky, it's minus one to hit. So that's just a minute of time firing away at four plus, need five plus. That helps. The second tactic is to try and keep them uh, away from the opponent, out of range is the other way I'm going to try and protect these. Often when I deploy, you'll see these being tucked right in the very corner of the board, out of range of as many of the opponent's weapons as possible. So if I can keep them further than 48 inches away, then last cannons are going to be out of range. Uh, those kind of weapons. I, I know the opponent is often going to have great things that can reach you know, long distance, but if I can stay out of range of as much firepower as possible, yes, I may take some damage, but I've got 14 wounds that can try and absorb damage coming through. You know, 14 wounds is going to take a good number of last cannon hits to actually bring that thing down, uh, plus the hard to hit. Hopefully, plus there's two of them, I have a chance uh, of keeping at least one of them alive, even if I don't go first. So uh, usually with other units like infantry uh, or tanks, you do sort of need to deploy them quite, you know, within range of the opponent ready to fire at them. Uh, but for these, significantly, because they're so fast, I can deploy it way out of range and then move it to within range very quickly. The movement uh, on full health is 45. Uh, even if damaged, I still get a 20, on the last bracket damage, I still get a 20 inch move, which is all right. That'll put me in range pretty quick. Uh, and then, on the regular damage bracket, it's uh, up to 30 inches. So, you know, your 14 wounds, your free up save, they're tougher than your average tank, they're harder to hit, and I can keep them out of trouble. So I rate the Storm Raven out of all the unit choices to take. I think these should be helpful enough. Uh, the, the preferred choice. And plus you can arm them really well. Now the issue I had was trying to deal with hordes and also trying to deal with uh, heavier targets like tanks and monsters and so on. These are able to do both. I take the Hurricane Bolters, two of them. Uh, you know, within 12 inches, that's 24 shots. So nice soft hordes targets you can hose these down pretty effectively. Uh, then the configuration I've always taken, I still stand by, I think it's uh, effective. It's the Stormstrike Missile Launcher, you get two shots. Uh, strength 8, AP minus 3 and 3 damage. Helpful weapon. And then take uh, the Twin Laz Cannon. So you get two shots at range 48, strength 9 minus 3, D6 damage. You know, big tank busting ability with that. And the Twin Multi Hunter, again, two shots, strength 8 minus 4, D6 damage. Get to in half range, which because you're a fly, you can maneuver where you need to be. Uh, 2 D6 choosing the best for your damage results. So this uh, this can bust, this can crack a, a tank open. No problem. And I've got two of them. And so I identify targets, there's two aims of this, uh, identify targets need to be taken out, so heavy tanks, super heavies, monsters and so on, so their aim is to try and take those out with their firepower, and then also uh, the delivery of my close combat units, these guys in particular. Now because there's two of them, I think I can get this, I, I think I'm right on this, uh, I'll cover some tactics here, tactics I've been thinking of. I try and deploy these two next to each other. So if my Terminators are in this one, and this one's destroyed, I then, with three, three inches from the base, I then deploy these right next to the second Storm Raven. And at the beginning of the turn, the, the main transport's died, but I have the second Storm Raven there. These kind of guys can immediately embark, and then fly off and continue the mission as normal. That's one tactic I thought of. I think I'm allowed to do it. So a bit of Blood Angels trickery there, perhaps. But keeping those two together, the other tactic is uh, I was saying earlier on about protecting my characters behind a screen. Uh, any characters, like I say I do, do my deployment, I place my two Storm Ravens in the corner of the table, I hide my characters uh, behind them. Or let's say I've moved out turn one and these guys have flown ahead, they've maneuvered into position, you know, aggressively close to the enemy, uh, ready to lay down their firepower. My characters, let's say we're heading in this direction, so we've moved out, my characters are all heading up behind. Characters cannot be shot at because there's a unit close nearby. 
Then your opponent thinks, right, okay, I'll try and destroy the flyers, I'll bring them down. He brings down the flyer, it has my terminators inside. I then deploy the terminators. <laughs> so the opponent then has to try and destroy the terminator squad to try and get through to the characters. And I think that tactic, two storm ravens, then a unit of terminators popping out, plus the scouts infiltrating, my characters, I think, are going to be safe to operate at the back and to move up the table uh, as quick as possible without being harassed by firepower. Unless it's snipers, but there's, there's not much sniper fire around in 8th edition. Again, this guy, character, Wings of Sanguinius, flying right up behind the Storm Raven. He cannot be shot at because the Storm Raven has to be shot first. So that's the tactic, I think. Even, even against the big shooty armies, the opponent's got to get through a lot of stuff try and get through to my characters. And even if I lose both of the Storm Ravens and even the Terminators, I've still got characters that can deliver some nasty damage to the opponent. So I, I think this list stands a chance of doing pretty good uh, against most of the armies on the channel, plus the challenge games that take place as well. So there it is, that's the, the list here. Quite a, quite a strong battle plan here. I've sort of really been figuring out what to do and, uh, meditating on tactics, listening to what subscribers have said and developing the army on the Plus channel. A lot of interest in Blood Angels. A lot of people have been leaving their suggestions as to what to do here. Um, oh look, some sunlight is shining through onto the Sanguinor. It's a sign <laughs> that the Blood Angels, they will do well. Honour will be restored. And it, oh, it's gone. <laughs> so just through. You saw that take place just there. A sign here that the Blood Angels will do well in the future. We'll see. I'm going to zoom, in, zoom out now and we'll take a look at this whole army laid out. All right, so there it is. Uh, quite compact and elite, but I think there's a lot of punch with this army here. Uh, firepower, nasty, very nasty potentially from these Storm Raven gunships. Plenty of anti-hordes, firepower from the Hurricane Bolters. Lots of anti-tank here with the laser cannons and multi-melters and the uh, missiles as well and then uh, so firepower is pretty good I haven't really lost much firepower despite dropping all of the tanks and then for close combat has been enhanced the Terminators remain uh, with their characters that are able to enhance them the Sanguinary Guard have been expanded to seven and then now uh, they have the benefit of the Sanguinor and also the Captain now uh, Lazarus Dawnhammer as he's been called by subscribers uh, like voted for that was the name that was chosen for him He's a new warlord, he is the one potentially that can lead the Blood Angels to glory. Plus the other HQ here, the Librarian Dragnor, which is, it can go inside the Storm Raven or it can move just as quick on foot with the use of the psychic powers and it is a beast in close combat as well. So some nasty units, one, two, three uh, units here, four units are very, very, very high impact. Sanguinor is decent enough as well. And then tactical, I've still got that tactical flexibility uh, where I can hold on to objectives uh, hold the backfield, mopping up actions and so on uh, with the scouts and they crucially generate or help generate that five bonus command points uh, for uh, battalion. So good number of command points. Uh, I, I do like the look of this list but leave your own comments and feedback. Uh, leave your own uh, changes if you want to make small changes, big changes. Perhaps I've missed out some tactics here that you use if you're an experienced Blood Angels player. Make your predictions as well how well you think this Blood Angels army will do. And then keep a look out for battle reports featuring this army here. Do, we've filmed two battle reports with these already. The first will be on the Plus channel. Uh, it will probably be out by the time you see this video. So check out the Plus channel at strikingscorpion82plus.vhx.tv. Uh, link will be in the video description below. And you'll gain access to all the exclusive battle reports and other content on there. And it helps, me, uh, it helps support me uh, in this hobby and making these uh, videos and then keep a look out I do plan to bring uh, battle reports to the regular channel here as well featuring this list and we'll get to see uh, Lazarus Dawnhammer in action. But there it is that's the brand new list for Blood Angels hoping that honour will be restored to the chapter but we'll see uh, in future battles. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.